Are you looking to remove some windows and, and block them off? If you're not sure how, stay tuned. In this video, I'm going to be removing some windows out of my garage. Uh, whoever built this garage, it's an add-on at the house. Smoked dope, did drugs or something wrong, I'm not sure which, I haven't figured that out. But Because uh, there's nothing square, there's nothing straight. Uh, I've never seen such weird nailing and weird things. In this case here, the windows were put in backwards. Usually whenever you set a window in a, in a, in a frame structure, you set the window from the outside to the end. You know, you're on the outside and you set the window in. In this case, they framed it all up, then they come inside and set the window from the inside and nailed it with 150 nails, making it hard to get. Uh, you have two types of windows. You have basically replacement windows, which means it doesn't have a flange, and then you have uh, new, and, new, new construction windows, which usually have a flange. These were old, crappy aluminum windows that uh, the glass was so thin that it had no thermal protection. So basically, this garage stayed frozen in the winter and hot in the, in the summer. So if you're interested in seeing how to take out a window and, and block it off, then this might be the video for you. You're going to have to understand that every construction, almost every home, is always a little bit different. This is not a typical construction, in my opinion. If you have a house that's, that's a newer friend, this house was built in 58 and it was built by people that didn't know how to do uh, carpentry work at all. I don't think they even knew what a level was. But um, you're going to run into different situations. There's always many different types of carpenters, good ones, bad ones, and ones with, from different parts of the United States or different regions or wherever. Uh, so the construction can be a little bit different. So, this should give you a gist of you know how to pull it out and just how to frame it in. Today we're going to take out a window and an air conditioner. We're going to frame it in so that we can just run sheetrock, and uh, I'm just going to patch the siding on the outside because I'm going to do an overall siding replacement for the whole entire uh, house. But this is the outside of the window. I've got it plastic off. So and same with that air conditioner. Air conditioner never worked since I moved into this house. Uh, the first order of business is to make sure that you clear everything at the bottom because you never, especially that air conditioner for dropping, but I had this stuff here, it really wasn't very much, but you know, it was laying there, so if I go check that air conditioner out and it drops, got stuff smashed. Plus you trip over your own feet if you're walking around stuff there, but I do. Now I know a lot of people, in order to pull a window out, first thing they're going to do is just going to bust it, going to bust it up. But, you know, why have broken glass everywhere? So we're going to try our best to take it apart and uh, not get debris all over, you know, glass debris over everything, you know, in the yard or inside the garage. Uh, I mean, it may be, may have to, depends, because most of the time when windows are put in, and I can see right there, it is, it's, they're what they call flanged. So when they put the siding and stuff over it, they put the siding over top of the nails, especially like for brick houses, and you have to kind of collapse the aluminum in, so you have to, if the windows, if the glass part doesn't come out, you have to bust the glass, but if you can avoid it, do so. Now I'm going to start off with the trim inside first. I've already taken off the bottom piece, and I've tried my best not to hurt the sheetrock because I'm going to put a piece in and uh, tape it in, mud, tape and mud it in. Uh, I, there's so many terrible carpenters out there <laughs> that think they know how to put stuff in. I mean, they put little finishing nails in this thing, and it's just which luckily for me, it's just barely up there, so that's a good thing. But like I said, whenever you're doing this stuff, just try your best not to tear stuff up. These are actually nice usable pieces of wood. I always recommend taking the nails out as you go. I mean, unless there's just a lot of them or it's a piece of wood that's a piece of crap. 
suck to uh, step on it. This window won't come out. It's not it's not uh, modern enough to do that. I may try to bend the frame so I can live, get the glass one at least one piece out. So I don't have to sit there and bust. Hopefully, I don't bust any of it. But you just never know. This bar is the best bar in the whole wide world for doing anything, really. I mean, it helps shim up doors. You can lift it as a lever. Destruction. Sometimes it helps when you what I can do is take a pair of pliers. Oh, we tried anyway. Now, if you're going to try to save the window and reuse it, then I wouldn't recommend doing anything that's going to hurt it. I will not be reusing this window. It's an old aluminum window that's a piece of crap. It has no thermal value at all. That's why I had it plastic off. Now that I've got that bend to it, just take my hammer and flatten it on out a little bit. So now if I have to bust the glass, I only have to bust one pane of glass. I'll probably figure out to take that out too without. But we'll see if we can get to the uh, flange outside. Hopefully we can. Don't try to uh, rip it all off at one end. Just work it gradually. Like I said, the more you can get these things to come apart, this hole, the smoother the job's going to go when you start pussing up more pieces. It makes it harder. Okay, so after messing with it, I've come to realize that the nails are underneath the window. There's nails in the wood it's, there's no way that this window was put in from the outside in so again like i mentioned all the people that's ever worked in this house should be shot killed something because they're retarded but they framed in the whole outside real pretty and then went in the inside and set the window and nailed it to these boards here so i'm going to go back inside and cut back some stuff to find the uh, nails or screws more like the nails people have never heard of a screw uh, and then take the window out to the inside, which is totally backwards. They're always normally, any normal construction flange windows are put on from the outside and, and screwed on or nailed on. Or replacement windows don't have flanges, they run screws the, to the inside. And that's how these are done. So we'll go inside, tear apart stuff, pull the window out, then we can start getting the rest of the specs that's wooded and I'll show you how to frame it in. Okay, I finally just had to go go for it and rip it out. It popped the glass because it was in such a bind to get it to push back through to the inside. Although I, once I got it started from the inside, I just kind of pulled it. But it doesn't really matter how you get your glass out or your window out when you want to board one up. But just, you know, if you can avoid busting the glass, it'd be great. In my case, it didn't work out that way. But uh, more than likely, you won't have Captain Moron that'll put in your, your window 
uh, and put it in the wrong way. <clears throat> now to measure for my studs, I'm going to use what's called a rule. And you've probably seen these in grade school, well, maybe not in grade school. The newer generation probably has never seen these things at all, but this is kind of old school. But with the rule, you have this nice slide. So you unfold it to the most inches you can and still be able to get in the hole, which in this case is 37. And then you just count 38, 39, 40, and an eighth. So this stud here be 40 and an eighth inch long. Now don't assume that they're all three going to be the same size. Roughly, I'm going to mark centers here soon, but just to get enough idea. Yeah, that's a uh, 40 and a 16th. The sun's blinding me and I can't see. And that's back to 40. That's actually 40 and a, and a quarter. This guy really knew stuff. He knew how to make things squared and straight. And, but anyways, be sure to measure in all three points before you start assuming you got one measurement and go with it. Okay, I've turned my first board out for the 40 and the 8th I was talking about. It's just a hair time, but that's okay. And you want to make sure you've got it trued up the other stud. The best you can, just so the other studs are a little bit wider. And you can uh, nail it in with a hammer, use uh, construction screws, regular screws. I'm going to use a nail gun. Kind of racing the weather now. Okay. Always a good idea to keep little scrap blocks, like tables, scrap shooters, for, for gauge blocks and stuff. So that'll be my pretend to be uh, a stud that's going to go up that wall. So I want to find my center. So I measure it. And I had to unfold or pull my rule out till I got to 25 will fit in there. If I go, as you can see, if I go to the next one, which is 31, it won't fit. So, if I go 25, I slide, to 30 and 3 quarter. 30 and 3 quarter. So I need to split that dead middle. Half of 30 is 15 and half of uh, three quarters, three eighths. I just know that. So I'll uh, mark my line 15 and three eighths. And I know that a stud is, even though they're supposed to be two by fours, they're only an inch and a half. So half and a half, half of a half inch, I'm sorry, half of an inch and a half is three quarters of an inch. So I just go from three eighths. And that's about easier. Change from tape measure anywhere you want to. I just count over three quarters of an inch to both sides. And if you want to make sure you're right, you put your stud there. And it'll sit on both sides of the line. So I can mark it up at the top. And I can. But if I'm going to do that, then I need to check and see how plumb this stud really is. And it's not. It leans that way. So, the best thing for me to do, so that my middle board is straight up and down, and it's not 100% crucial when you're blocking in a window, uh, but it's just good practice. The best thing to do is to, that way the big idea is that when you run your nails from the outside, if you know that it's 100% plumb, it's better to trace your nails or your, to hit your studs. If you got more leaning, you may miss some the stuff. So, what I'll do... And this is a square. Um, I'll put that down in the description too, in case you don't know what one is. But uh, that way you can mark your, a squared line. If you're looking at the board 
two angles would be 90, so it would be square. I might put a little mark on the sheet rock. What I'm going to do is come off that line that I made, lean my level until I get the bubble in there plumb. Now, what this also does, it gives you a measurement for a scab board. I mean, you can just run the studs and that, that would work, but I like to, to, to help seal for air and stuff. So, according to that, it's going to come out 14 and a half inches. And that one's 14 and three quarters. I told you it's way off. We'll cut us a 14 and a half and 14 and three quarters. Scab boards in top, bottom. Okay. You can build. You can build a frame if you wanted to do that and set it in there. If you want to make the extra measurements that account for it being off. But I already knew this garage was built by an idiot, so there's not going to be a board that's plumb or straight. So it's better just to scab the pieces in. If it's all good and square, I'd say build a frame and just set it in there and do it to it. Bad time when you don't have a camera person. 13, 14, 14. No. Blocks cut out. And now the framing's done. Now it's a matter of getting the OSB cut out. Well, that's what I'm going to use on this. There's several different kinds of backings you can use, especially since OSB is $25 a 4 by 8 sheet for 7 16 now. But uh, I'll, put, uh, I'll cut out the OSB, put it up. I'll put insulation in, in, this, uh, in these holes. And then uh, get some sheetrock and sheetrock it. Okay, I've cut out my piece of OSB, but I want to make sure I seal from aircraft, from any air that could possibly come through, so I'm going to pop it. First, put me some caulk. And now I just threw some lap siding on there to fit the hole. It's not perfect, it's not the right way to put it on because I'm going to tear all this siding off and put on a, a different type of siding. But this will hold, hold me for now. I'm going to throw some primer, some cheap paint on it or something. This, that just helps keep the OSB from back, and all the rest of the wood behind the siding getting rotten from that. Okay, I wanted to do a recap because I did mess up on uh, making the video a little bit. It's hard to actually do the work and videotape yourself sometimes and I was racing the weather yesterday but anyways how I put this together just to recap I put this board in against the stud first I can't back up any further from close niche quarters but then I put in my scab board top and bottom and what I did is I measured the center put my mark there 
I've measured the center before I put the scab board in to know where the center whether this was going to be between these two studs. So once I marked center, then I uh, measured back three quarters of an inch. I did not do that, however, on the top because, as I explained, I wanted this board to be plumb, which means straight up and down, as accurate as it can be. Because you'll you'll run across when you're doing construction that most most of the time people who ever do construction uh, throw things up there they don't really care. Don't they? Do, they don't even know what level it is, I guess. But uh, that board there is almost a quarter of an inch out. It goes. If you follow from the bottom to the top, it almost is a quarter inch out that way, so it's not plumb. And that's what I was saying, you could actually build a frame that sit in this hole if it was perfectly square, but this one wasn't, that's why I used the scab boards. Um, so I just used my left four foot level and made my marks for center. And I measured from the center line three quarters over one side, three quarters of the three quarter and three quarters an inch and a half. Now two before is an inch and a half wide, not actually two inches. So once I had that, then I've had my measurement for my scab board from here to here and cut it, nailed it, same at the top, cut it, nailed it. Then I hammered this board here to the scab board here. Then um, I put this board in, this board right here, I put it in and it was actually somewhat plumb. But I went ahead and measured from my scab board to the top and the bottom and cut those and nailed those in. And of course then I put my OSP on the outside and I caulked it from, to keep from out moisture and stuff. And now I'm fixing to do the sheetrock and or the, well, I'm gonna put the insulation in and then sheetrock it. And that's pretty much just how you close in a window. As you can see, I've already got the window closed in and she rocked and the same with the air conditioner that wasn't sticking to the wall. Uh, I didn't really videotape. Actually, I was worried racing the weather that day, so I, I missed out on some, some footage I could have taken, but in all honesty, it's pretty basic and simple. The, your hardest part of ever taking out a window and you know, closing it up is actually going to be taking out the window because unless I just had several houses here, uh, that I could show you different methods, it, it's going to be, it, it's all going to be hard to explain. This window was aluminum. Uh, I was going to, I bent the track, took the sash out on the bottom that avoided that breaking that glass, but uh, the upper sash was, the glass was actually glued. I took out the plastic strips, but it was still glued. And the part that I didn't actually get to record was when I was actually pushing the window back in. Uh, I, when I come inside, I actually twisted just a little bit too hard and it broke the, the glass. Uh, otherwise, it would have just come right out. The person that put the window in was an idiot and he put the window in backwards. He built a frame to make it all look pretty on the outside, although it still wasn't functional because it left gaps where you still had air and stuff coming into the holes that were mounted were, were for the mounting of the window. But uh, he put the window in from the inside to the out and you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to put the window in from the outside if it's a flanged window. Now if it's a replacement window, <clears throat> what's the difference between a, a flanged window and a, re, or a, a say, new construction window and a replacement window? The, usually the difference is, is new construction usually has flanges. In other words, you have a nice window, vinyl, whatever you're going to make it out of aluminum, but I have a flange for nailing. And you usually build your wall, and before you do anything else, or you, uh, you can go, I've seen it several, two different ways. I hate the first way, where they nail the window to the actual studs and put the plywood over it. Because that makes it almost nearly impossible to get the window out. You have to use the sawzall to cut the flange off. The correct way would be, you know, put your studs up on your construction, then put your plywood or OSB or whatever you're going to put, then nail the window to that and then put your siding over the, the lip. And that also makes it a little hard, but usually you have brick molding that goes around and you take the brick molding off and get to the screws. In most cases, it's almost easier to just sawzall. If you can get you a, a gap through it to sawzall the, the um, or a multifunction tool that has a blade that vibrates, but to cut your flange off. 
A replacement window is basically just a square frame window and it has holes that, that they've designed to go out. That way you, you try to reframe it or if you get the good measurement, you can set it in there in the, to the wood and then put your screws. You may have to shim it, but you put your screws to the outside and then caulk it in. Uh, replacement windows are a lot easier to deal with, but like I said, new construction usually is always flanged. But in this case, he used a flange window. He put it in from the inside out, it was wrong. He put, I think, 50 nails all the way around. I guess he's making sure that window would come out. And that's one reason why it ended up busting the glass, just because of the, just the idiotic part of putting that many nails in it. He didn't caulk it right, he didn't have the wood uh, butted up against the, the part right to where he could caulk it. So he was actually getting air through the little holes, because they did, flange windows will often come with holes from the, uh, edges so that way you, if you don't want to use the flange you can go right into the studs with it but took it out and then I already knew this whole this whole high tower house no one ever used a level or, or anything or square everything's out of square out of level um, so I imagine they just threw studs up and it looked good and they just kept going so this stud and this wall here was going off at an angle in other words it was about things actually just a hair over a quarter inch at the top leading that way than it was at the bottom, so my pole wasn't square. Now this board on the other side was actually plumb, it was a straight up down. But if it had been a perfect square, I could have built a nice square frame and then just set it in there and nailed it in, built it on the floor, pop it in there. But in most cases, you're going, especially older homes, you're going to run into where it's going to be easier to just, what they call, scab a board in there. In other words, I, I cut the board using a rule to get the exact measurement, put the board to it, and then just scabbed in my pieces until I had a ledge created. Then I popped OSB on the outside and I went ahead and caulked around it just to make sure I've got, uh, got rid of any type of uh, air gaps or any, any possible air coming into the side of the wall. Then I put a siding on it. Right now it's a temporary siding because I'm going to reside the entire house with a different type of siding. So that was just there to keep rain off the OSB. And then I come inside and I put insulation in the wall. R13 I think and then I just put this sheetrock up and I mudded it. Now I have two more windows to take out so be looking for the next video because I will be showing more in depth of how to do the, the inside part, the sheetrock and how I cut the sheetrock, how I actually you know started the tape. This is two coats of mud. I used some mud that I've had here for two or three years and it's surprising it's still somewhat usable but it stinks. Matter of fact this close it's a good thing you're seeing it not smelling it. So a little odor to it. This mud mud will actually sour, and it gets to a slight sewage wet dog smell to it. It's hard to explain. It, it goes away, but I definitely won't be using any kind of latex over top. So I put uh, oil-based kills on it just to make sure that I don't have any odor. Of course, it's a garage; it's not really gonna matter. You would never want to use outdated mud inside of a home. Um, but I'll get more in depth that I've got a hole in a wall that I've got to fix. So I'm also shot to repair a broken piece of sheetrock or a you know, hole in the wall type thing how to replace that so be sure to uh, like and subscribe and uh, be sure to keep a uh, lookout for more videos because I'll do some more I've got tons of projects and uh, I want to include you all while I'm doing them thanks for watching